I want to give you some tips on how to improve your bead blasting. I'd say about 90% of the bead blasting jobs I've seen was where the finish was mostly a, a dull finish with maybe a little bit of a satin shine to it, but generally fairly poor. Uh, I've seen this so many times that I figured it would be a good idea to make, a, make an instructional video on how to do bead blasting so the results come out the way you actually want them. Uh, glass beads have been really popular for many years. It's really popular among you know, restoration people. Unfortunately, I think uh, a lot of people see, see them as a silver bullet for restoring parts. They expect these beads to clean everything off of parts, you know, rust, scale, uh, dirt, and grease, you name it. And then use these same beads to leave a, a great finish, which to me doesn't make a lot of sense in the first place. Uh, I mean, it's a compromise like everything else. So with that being said, here are some tips that I can give you on how to get the best finish you can with glass beads. Uh, first of all, number one, turn down your pressure. Glass beads are meant to be used at low pressure, so turn the pressure down as low as possible. This is the <clears throat> this is the most important factor you can use for increasing the life of your beads and getting a higher finish. Remember, this stuff is glass, so you know what happens when you throw glass against a hard object; it smashes. The same way with glass, you know, glass beads. I use 50 psi with my siphon blaster. Uh, that's a good starting pressure. Uh, you know, you can go higher, but the higher you go, the shorter the life of the beads. Glass beads are meant to be a finishing media, since they're round and smooth, and you can tell that they're not designed to cut. They're they're made to burnish or polish apart, just like any other tumbling media, um, you know, would. But it but it does it at a higher rate. Keep in mind that the pressure that that you use to create a high finish on parts won't clean a surface. It won't even remove a, a water stain. If you turn the pressure up with glass beads to force them to clean, and they will, but if you do that to force them to clean, what's going to actually happen is the beads will begin to smash upon impact with your part, essentially turning the beads into crushed glass. At that point, you're not even using you're not even using beads. Uh, and crushed beads is a very effective blasting media, by the way, but there's really no sense in buying expensive high quality glass beads like potter's beads or ballotini just to smash them to dust when you you know to be able to clean parts if you're gonna do that just buy the the crushed glass instead and and run it it's it's a lot cheaper in beads in fact it's about half the price of glass beads so you might as well just buy that also when you smash beads into your parts uh, you start producing a lot of excess dust and sharp particles that get trapped in the cabinet and they fall onto the rest of your clean remaining beads and it contaminates them. This in turn gets picked up with your good beads and degrades the finish. Uh, it almost goes without saying that when higher pressures are used it smashes the beads on impact and embeds a lot of those particles into the surface. So if the, the part you're blasting is an internal engine part or some critical part that's not supposed to have glass embedded in it, uh, you know it's, that's a really bad idea to use high pressures. Number two, you can't put a great finish on aluminum without first stripping off the oxide layer. Uh, the layer is too hard to burnish properly and the stains will not be removed. And even though it might get some shine, it's going to look like shine stains. It's not going to look good, trust me. Uh, you're not going to be able to strip off this oxide layer with glass beads because they're not designed to cut like I previously mentioned. Instead, use a de dedicated sharp cutting abrasive to clean off this oxide or rust. Uh, abrasives such as crushed glass I already mentioned, black beauty, aluminum oxide, you know, there's a bunch of them. My preferred abrasive, you know, by far, is crushed glass it, because it cleans as fast as aluminum oxide or silicon carbide, but it's extremely clean. It leaves a nice, bright, whiter finish on metals and it's a fraction of the cost. In, in fact, it's about half the cost of silicon carbide. Regardless of the abrasive you use, um, you know, use something like 60 mesh or finer, 80 mesh or finer is better. Anything with a flower-like consistency works great. Uh, if you're dealing with scale, you're going to have to mix in some coarser abrasives with that to take off the heavier scale. Uh, but the stuff with, like the 80 grit on up or the, the 80 mesh on up will remove aluminum oxide very quickly. It just it just strips right off. It cuts right into it and removes it. And also rust too. Rust even better. 
Uh, the downside of using a dedicated abrasive is now you need another cabinet. Uh, but you know, what if you can't or don't want to get another cabinet, which is completely understandable. In that case, I, I recommend just getting a portable blaster. There's different types of those. Uh, you're probably familiar with the siphon blaster with the pickup tube. You stick in the bucket or bag of abrasive and pick that up. And also the blasters, the handheld pistol grip jobs that have the hopper built right on top. You've probably seen those too in the tool catalogs. They both work pretty well and it's up to you, which you what you use. I've used both equally well. Uh, you can also use the pressurized tanks. That's probably the most expensive option, anywhere from you know $100 on up to a few thousand dollars, in which case you might as well just get another cabinet if you have the room in your shop. Uh, another option that's not going to be real popular with probably me or you is um, switching out, you know, swapping abrasive for glass beads in one cabinet, switching depending on what you want to do. That gets really old, uh, cleaning out a cabinet, by the way, and switching out. I've done that a few times. It's not a lot of fun. So you're probably going to want to use either get a dedicated cabinet or portable equipment. If you're using portable, make absolutely sure you wear an N99 respirator. Uh, do not under any circumstances use a paper mask from the hardware store because they do nothing. I don't even know why they sell those things. I, I have no clue. Anyways, use the N99 respirator. You can get them at McMaster Car, MSC, or wherever. A, f a full face shield like you use for grinding. You need the eye and face protection for sure with abrasives and also heavier gloves. Um, Number three, when bead blasting, make sure your, your air is dry and oil free. Now this is not only to prevent clogs, but to prevent moisture and oil tarnishing and staining your surfaces. Uh, older Japanese castings are especially prone to this because of the, the higher copper content. Just a few seconds of moist air or oil hitting one of these surfaces, this freshly exposed aluminum will start to discolor it and stain it. Uh, after that, further bead blasting will only make it worse. It'll just pound the discoloration further into the material. The only thing you can do at that point is go back with a different abrasive, strip that off, and do it over again. Uh, lastly is number four. All, all glass beads leave a satin finish, but the lower the mesh size, generally speaking, the brighter the finish. There's other factors too, of course, like your your blasting pressure, but the larger the glass beads, the brighter the finish to a point well, where they will leave a bright finish but it will start looking coarse again. So you kind of have to see it to know what I'm talking about but take my word for it. So if you've been having problems trying to get a good finish with bead blasting, follow these guidelines and your finish will improve greatly. Hopefully you found the video informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll be seeing you next video.